Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome back to my C++ series. Today we're going to be talking all about operators in C++ and operator overloading in C++. So first of all, what's an operator? Well, an operator is basically some kind of symbol that we use usually instead of a function to perform something. So I'm not just talking about mathematical operators that we have such as plus, minus, divide, you know, multiply, all that kind of stuff. But we've also got other operators that we use very commonly and we've actually been using quite a few already. These include things like the dereference operator, the arrow operator, plus equals, there's the ampersand operator that we use for memory addresses. We've also been using the bit shift left operator, which is two left angular brackets for printing out stuff into our Cout, into our console. And then we've got other operators, which you probably don't think of as operators at all, such as new and delete. They're actually, they're also operators. And then we have entirely different operators, which are weird, such as the comma operator. Yes, the comma can also be an operator, as well as parentheses. Yeah, that's right, two like brackets, two parentheses. That's also an operator. I'm not going to list off all of the operators we have available in C++. I will make videos, specific videos about some of them because they, they, they need some talking about. But if you want to see the full list of C++ operators that exist, then I've linked a reference in the, in the description below. So operator overloading, what does that mean? Well, the term overloading in this sense just means kind of giving a new meaning to or adding parameters to or creating essentially. In the case of operator overloading, you're allowed to define or change the behavior of an operator in your program. This is a very, very useful feature that isn't supported in languages such as Java. It is partially supported in languages such as C Sharp. Usually the, the good parts of it are supported, but C++ kind of gives us full control. And that's kind of, it's kind of a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. And that's just the case with C++. It gives you so much control that it can lead to so many bad programs and people hating on the language. I might actually make a video just talking about all this because I know that a lot of people are, are interested in that. But at the end of the day, operators are just functions. They're just functions. Instead of giving your function a name such as add, you can give it an operator such as plus. And in a lot of cases that really helps to clean up your code and streamline it. It'll just, it just looks better and it's easier to read. However, in other cases, if you're using the ampersand operator to push a variable into a data set, what are you doing? Looking at you boost serialization. Really at the end of the day, your use of operator overloading should be rather minimal and only in cases where it makes perfect sense. If people need to go to the definition of your operator or the definition of your class or struct or whatever to see what it actually does, then then you've probably failed. For example, when defining a maths class and you need to add two mathematical objects together, then overloading the plus operator makes perfect sense because you can literally write code like a plus b and it will work. In fact, let's take a look at some examples. I'm going to write a vector two struct. So basically what this is going to be is a vector two. I've, I've decided to make it a struct because the fields are going to be public. It's going to have two floats, an X and a Y. That's all the vector two is, it's a two component vector. I'm going to define a constructor quickly for this, which just takes in an X and a Y. And now inside our main, we can actually start to create these things. So let's just say that I want to store a position and maybe a speed as well. Okay, great, so I've got two vectors. And now I would like to add them together and store the results, say, over here. So I come to the problem of what do I write? Well, in a language without operator overloading, or if you're in C++ but you don't want to use operator overloading, then you would probably write something like position.add speed. So if we go up here, we'll quickly define the add function. This is going to return a brand new vector two. We'll call the function add. It's going to take in an existing vector two. We'll pass this by const reference to avoid copying. We'll mark the function as const since it's not going to modify this class. It's just going to create a new vector two with the result. And we'll just return vector two x plus other dot x and y plus other dot y. Okay, seems pretty simple. We've got this working here. It looks relatively okay. But what if we wanted to modify our speed by some kind of modifier? We might have had a power up that changes our speed to be slightly faster, maybe 10% faster or something like that. Suddenly, we want to be able to do something like speed times power up. So with this current set, that means that we have to write code like speed dot multiply power up. Uh, we have to add the multiply function. So I'm just going to copy and paste this add function, change it to say multiply and just change the operators here to be the multiplication operator. Okay, cool. Now this is where it starts to look a little bit hard to read. And unfortunately in a language such as Java, 
This really is your only choice. But in C++, we have operator overloading, which means that we can take advantage of those operators and actually define our own to deal with the vector two struct. So potentially, instead of writing something like this, we can convert this to just use the mathematical operator. So we'll do something like position plus speed times power up. And with operator precedence playing a role here, this should get evaluated before this. So let's pop up here and define two operators, the multiplication operator, which is just an asterisk, and this addition operator, which is the plus sign. So the way that we define these is like any other function. We write the return result, which of course is going to be the exact same. The return type is going to be the same as it is for these functions. So if we're, if we're writing add over here, let's move this up here so that we can kind of group them. Instead of the function name, we write the word operator followed by the operator, which is plus. We then open up our parentheses and type in the parameter that we want. So really you can see it's exactly the same. And then we write const at the end of this because like any other function that doesn't modify the class, like this add function, we still, we still want it to be const. And then what we can do is just return the same result. Or in this case, it would be much simpler to just return add other. And that's it. We've created the plus operator. If we come back here and we just comment out the rest of this code, you can see that this code is fine. And if we can, we can compile this and it will compile and everything is great. Now, since these are like any other function, I could have basically done the reverse of this. Instead of this operator calling the add function, I could make the add function call the plus operator. And a lot of people actually don't know about this because the syntax looks, looks a bit weird and you don't see this very often. But what you could do is just change this to be basically that. And then over here in add, we could either return this plus other, which is kind of the easy case, I guess. We're converting this. We really need to make a video on this because the this keyword is is quite special and we need to talk about that. There'll be a there'll be a card up there if that's already done. We're dereferencing it because this is originally a pointer, a const pointer in this case. We're dereferencing it to just turn this into a normal vector two, and then we're just adding it with other. That's pretty common. People write code like that a lot, but what we can do is just address this operator plus like a function by just writing return operator plus and then other. Again, it looks a bit weird, but totally gonna compile and it totally works. Me personally, due to just code style, I like to return code like this instead. Okay, cool. So to complete this, we'll just add our multiply operator. I'll copy this operator plus, paste it over here and change this to be operator times or operator multiply and we'll change this to say multiply. Now if we uncomment this then you can see that we have this code here which in my opinion looks much 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 better than this and it makes a lot more sense. Okay great so as I said I'm not going to go through every single operator because that would take all day and it's probably not that useful. I will make future videos on operators as we use them or as I see fit. However I will show you one more operator and that's the left shift kind of operator that we use with stdc out. So suppose that now that we've got this vector 2 we want to actually print it to the console. stdc out as you probably would have noticed has this kind of shift left operator which takes in various types. At the left side we've got the c out class and at the right side we've got some kind of data type. So we'll type in result 2 which is our vector and then we'll type in end line as if we were just able to do this. Now we can't do this because there is no overload for this operator which takes in an output stream, which is what C out is, and then an actual vector two, but we can add that. So outside of the vector two class, because this has nothing to do with vector, we're just adding this to C out. What we're going to do is write STD O stream, which stands for output stream, it's a reference. So this is the original kind of definition of this operator that I'm overloading here. We're going to write operator left shift, Inside here, we're going to take in the class because you can see this is a definition outside of the class. So we still need a reference to the existing stream, which in this case is going to be C out. And then I'm going to pass my const vec2 by reference here. Over here, I'm going to say stream and then shift basically whatever I want to print. So in this case, other.x, the stream already knows how to print a float. So we don't need to overload the float or anything like that. And then maybe a comma and then other.y. And make sure that you of course write o stream here and not string like like me. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And then finally, we need to return a reference to the stream, which is just this stream. So we can just hit return stream. And that's it. You can see that this code now compiles. And if I run this code, we'll get 4.55 comma 5.65 printing, which of course is the right answer. So there we go. That's a look at a few of the operators that we can overload in C++ and how just operators work in general. Remember, they're just functions. And remember, just because you can overload an operator and make your code look weird, <laughs> don't, because it's going to make it harder for people to read. It's probably going to annoy you yourself. And it's just, it's just bad. Just 
bad code style, don't do it. This left shift operator that we overloaded is kind of like the two string function that you commonly override in languages such as Java or C Sharp. And so that's one of the great things about C++. You can kind of have operators instead of functions. Another great example, which C Sharp does support, but Java doesn't, is the equals equals operator. In Java, you have to write an equals override for every class if you want to be able to compare it. And then later on, you have to write dot equals everywhere. So if I wanted to compare result one and result two, I'd have to write if result one equals result two or something like that. Or maybe if it doesn't equal, I would write that and that just looks all messy. So instead of that, we also have the option of writing the equals equals operator. That's the final one that I'll show you guys for today because I, I wanted to show it. We'll write bool because that's the return result, of course. Gonna return true or false, operator equals equals, const vector two, reference other, const because it's just a comparison. We're not going to be modifying this class and we'll just return x equals equals other dot x and y equals equals other dot y. So we're basically checking to see that those floats are exactly the same. Scrolling down here, we can change this code to say something like result equals equals result two. You can see that works perfectly fine. And finally, if we wanted a not equals operator, we, we could copy this code, change this to not equals, and then just call basically the opposite of equals. So we'll call this equals equals other, but we'll put this in parentheses with an explanation mark at the front to reverse the result of that. Alternatively, with the kind of syntax that I showed you earlier, you could write something like return operator equals equals other, and then kind of reverse that result and return that. That looks weird, don't do it that way. If you are doing it this way, which you probably should, return this. Or maybe alternatively, just have an equals function and call that and return the reverse of that or something like that. Again, you have these operators, but some people prefer not to use them. When creating a library, I like to add both. So I would still have a, like, like I did over here, I would still have this add function, but I would also have an operator. So you've basically got, you're basically, you're basically giving anyone using your API choices as to what they want to use. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button and you can support this series by heading over to patreon.com forward slash the channel. I hear that people there are getting videos early, like every day, which is pretty cool. So if you want to, if you want to jump on this train early, earlier than anyone else and get to see these videos early as soon as possible, as soon as I'm done editing them, they go up on Patreon. If you guys want to get on that train, then link in the description below. You're also ensuring that I have more time to make these videos, which results in more videos. So fun for the whole family. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.